So I've already talked a little bit about working on a team in the past, um, and Ursula's probably also talked about working on an artist team with me in the past too. I'm, I'm sure we have lots of videos on that, and there's lots of intricacies to it, but today I want to talk about things to consider before forming a partnership, and if you're already in a partnership or a team, things that you want to maybe negotiate out, you know, before you have a problem. And I'm an advocate for creating contracts and agreements for when you do any sort of teamwork. Like I said, uh, they can catch problems before they occur and before they ruin your project from the inside out. This applies to commission work, comic projects, to anything, honestly. Currently, I'm working with several different creative groups other than just the me and Ursula group. I'm working on Honeywalls, my illustrated novel right now that'll be illustrated by someone other than Ursula, and that's pretty cool. It'll be on Kickstarter really soon, like in April, and if you're like a time traveler, I'll probably have a card up for it, but if not, look forward to that. Hope we make it. And I'm also working on the Moonlight Anthology, which is the LGBTQ werewolf anthology, and I'm working with tons of different artists on that, and writers. That's a whole heckin' thing. And so far, I've yet to have any big communication troubles, aside from me kind of being slow to respond sometimes just because I'm busy. Now, obviously, this isn't super official legal advice or anything, especially because I'm, like, not a lawyer. Like, don't, don't come to me for, like, legal advice. But I'm here to talk about the five main things I can consider when creating an agreement, especially agreements that have very little amounts of money, like comic amount of money is not worth lawyer lawyer stuff all the time, <laughs> especially when you have zero money, right? So number one, you need to consider your rights. This is easy to overlook when making a project with friends, like super easy to look over and it can mess you up. You want to know who owns what. Is it a 50-50 split and if you were to split up you can't touch it because you only own half the work and you need both halves to make it work? Or do you own your own OCs and when you split up you're free to use them in other contexts and have fun with them? Or, you know, are they attached to the work so much that you are not allowed to use them? If you're working on a short-term project with someone, you need to make it clear like what the work can and can't be used for. If you're making an avatar for someone, be specific that they can only use it on personal social media accounts and not as like the logo of their company. If you commission an artist for art, make sure that they know what you want the ability to do with the art. For example, you may want a cover and you may be considering doing future print runs of it other than just the one print run and you might make some changes to the inside of the book but it still will remain the same book you need to make sure that's clear that you can keep using the cover beyond your initial print run um, and even if it feels like a given like it feels like you should both know this it feels silly to bring it up just bring it up write things down in your contract anyways worst thing that happens is it was super obvious and you both agree but there may be cases where your partner and you aren't on the same page and you don't know it until you bring it up. So yeah, make sure you know who owns what and how that can be used. Um, number two, I'm going to talk about spoilers a bit. Like, I'm not going to talk about actual spoilers to anything. Nothing is about to be spoiled. But this kind of goes in with rights and I think it's important to think about when you're working on like a long-term webcomic thing together. As a part of rights, managing spoilers is something you kind of like overlook. Like, is your partner allowed to put up pages in their portfolio before or after the pages become public? Are they allowed to take pages that might be spoilery out of context and post them? Like, you want to make sure all of that is answered and it is answered early on for the two of you. Like, are select pages allowed? Are they allowed to post pages like without dialogue early if they just want to use it in their portfolio for getting a job or something because they really like the page? Likewise, when are they allowed to share news? When are they allowed to reveal covers? Um, talk about plot events, etc, etc. You may want to negotiate different contracts for, you know, each phase of your journey. Like if you're working on a new book, it might be time to like 
make sure everything makes sense about the book specifically. Make sure to iron it all out and iron out how you want to get information across to readers. How many memes are you allowed to post? You might be surprised that you and your partner want different levels of secretiveness about the project, so it's good to be on the same page. And the final one that kind of has to do with rights is number three, editorial say. How are disagreements going to be settled? Uh, it's up to you to decide what's best, as with all of these, but make sure it's clear who gets final say and who gets final say on what. Are all art decisions finalized by the artist while writing gets to be finalized by the writer, or is it the other way around because you want to give each other like checks and balances, you know, have something that you both like in both aspects? Either way is perfectly fine, don't get me wrong. In the case with me and Ursula, I have final say on everything because I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> Not really. I, I'm just louder. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, another thing to consider, especially if you're working on like a smaller project that you're paying for, like how many corrections are allowed, do they cost more after a certain time? Or in the case of comic books, uh, do you get a certain amount of vetoes per scene? Like you get three vetoes as an artist, you're like, I don't like how this is going in this book and you get three vetoes as a writer if you guys disagree. Either way, determine how you're going to settle this stuff before you get into a fight, because it's harder to be dealing with these two problems at the same time. Uh, another one to make sure is, like, do you both get a final look at the proof copy before okaying the printing? That's all. Make sure it's all clear and make sure you're both happy with that. Uh, number four, schedule. It's always good to know what to expect of each other. Outline a schedule you want to follow, allow for sickness, like burnout, mental health, everything to be accounted for, but you want everyone to be aware of timelines, important due dates, what happens when due dates are missed without like reasonable ex explanation. Yeah, make sure your schedule is ironed out, make sure like each time you go into a bigger project or like a new buffer or anything that schedules are paid attention to and that you both are on the same page and you know what's what. And number five is money. I think this is kind of the most obvious one to negotiate in your contract which is kind of why I put it last because you know everyone leaves by the end of these videos. Well, not everyone except you, you're here. But like money is a pretty obvious one. You want to know how it's going to be divided up. If you're a couple of comic artists and you're starting out together and there's no money in sight, like you're like, ha, money, what's that? Still keep this in mind, like everything here, it's about addressing problems before they happen. You also want to know um, who is paying for what and if they're ever going to be compensated for that pay. Like, let's say that one of you is paying for web hosting. Maybe you want to keep a tally of how much money you're spending on web hosting and take that out of the, like, uh, first money you get. Like, if you start selling a book, be like, hey, I have all these web hosting fees that we've both been sharing in, so I want all of that covered before we start splitting money off. It's good to just address that know where your money's going and how you're going to deal with it. Just be aware of it. And calling back to my last point, make note of how payment will happen. When should you expect money to be in? Like what is what is your schedule for payment? Very important to know both how much and when you are getting paid for these things. And another thing, like aside from just the schedule of like how you're going to get paid, also look into like physically like how are you going to get paid like what program are you going to use to pay th through with because you don't want to come to the point where you are dealing with payments and one of you is expecting paypal and the other is expecting an e-transfer or worse a wire transfer where you have to pay like a ridiculous amount of money just to send a small amount of money sometimes like you want to both be on the same page of how payment is going to happen and like that goes down to like um how fees are going to be managed by everyone involved yeah very important to know and that's kind of it those are my five categories to kind of think of. I'm sure there's more. For all of these, I'd really recommend just looking at horror stories and the disaster stories of projects that have really failed and see 
what you should be aware of and what you need to iron out before heading into a project. Take account of them in your contract. I think SIFWA has a really good um, writing contract, like an example of like um, one that's really uh, writer friendly. Um, writer and artist friendly. It's like, it's good to just look at how things can be split up. And like I said, like, I don't go super in depth because there's like not enough money for me to care super much. It's kind of low risk, honestly, when you're dealing with like small potatoes. (laughs) Like if you're dealing with a big potato, look out and get legal advice. But I don't know. If it's just the two of you and you might only make 50 bucks in the next few years, I think you should just maybe do like a small little contract just to just for the sake of you two and not for any like legally legal sake. Does that make sense? Anyways, um, this this video might be a little bit late because I have had a morning. I was going to talk about some other stuff, um, some other videos. But I didn't really have any time, so I had to do this short one. You want to know why I didn't have time? So I was sitting down to do some, like, meditative journaling, because I'm trying to, like, chill out and bring positive vibes into my life. Uh, I didn't bring any positive vibes into my life. I brought kittens into my life. So I was sitting and... I was like, I'm going to do some watercolor. And so I was doing like an ink layer because um, it was like non-water soluble ink. I wanted to do like the black in that, have some nice bold lines. So I did some ink, I did some watercolor, and my cat jumped into my hecking inkwell. He just like flipped it and ink went everywhere. He was covered in ink. The other cat came to investigate. My beautiful white cat became a black and white cat. She was a tuxedo cat for a little bit. Um, he was definitely covered in ink, and when I grabbed them together, he, like, got more ink on her, so I had to, like, wash these cats, and they were not happy, because, like, they're cats, they don't want to be in a bath, so, yeah, I washed them. I found that washing them in the bathtub without the water running was a smarter idea. I always remember that, but we don't have a bath stopper, so that was the whole thing. So then I had to, like, wash ink off the floor from all their dribbles, and then they had to, like, burrito them up (laughs) and leave them in the bath bathroom as I go downstairs and I'm just like pouring water on the carpet to kind of get the ink up so it doesn't dry into like this thick black mass and so like as I'm pouring more water on the floor more ink is coming up and I'm like how much ink because I had just this tiny little like like a bottle cap full basically and it was crazy so yeah there was this huge puddle I got out the wet vac because we have a wet vac thankfully and I had it suck up all the ink and I'm just like emptying the wet vac into this bucket and it's just like becoming this black sludge it's just like how how did like a bottle cap of ink turn into like this monstrosity horror that I'm dealing with and I yelled at a cat Not my proudest moment, not super meditative, not very good vibes. So yeah, I did that. I turned on the dehumidifier because I think I put so much water on the floor to try and like bring up the ink that it started like dripping through into the basement. Because when I came down into the basement to search for the wet vac, there was like water drips. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to ruin the floors. It seems fine. Everything seems fine. I think... The fact that I wet backed really helped. And then I texted Ursula and I was like, I need you to bring me rubbing alcohol and two new cats. And she was like, oh no, what happened? And I explained this to her. I've chilled out, honestly. So after I cleaned up, I returned to my journal meditation thing and I did my last bits. So yeah, that hopefully turned out b- better for me. Um, I chilled out and then I went upstairs to quietly be in my room away from all the animals. (laughs) They made a huge- in the meantime, I had them locked into the bathroom because I was like, I don't want to deal with you two. You guys are wet and messy and possibly still covered in ink. Let me check after you in like a little bit. So I left them in there. And there's like a litter box in there. And I don't know, they were mad. They they had anarchy still in their hearts. So there's like a tornado of like sand everywhere. And like just kitty litter everywhere. It's in the bathtub. It's in the toilet. It's on the sink counter. I'm like, what did you do? You guys are allowed in the bathroom all the time. And you've never done this. 
why are you so full of anarchy right now and chaos? I don't know. They're just full of it. It's it's all my meditation energy is it it it's counteracted by their chaos. <sighs> okay. Yeah. And yeah. Oh my goodness. And now I have a doctor's appointment, so I hope I hope my chill continues because I'm, I'm not looking forward to this doctor's appointment. I don't even think they're going to stab me with needles because they already stabbed me with needles on um, Tuesday. I went to get my blood drawn. And so I'm going to get the results today. And I'm not excited ever about any of this stuff. And next week I have a dentist appointment again. Like I can't catch a break. Oh, <sighs> hopefully like I think the dentist appointment is my very last appointment um, until May. So please help me out guys <laughs> my impassioned rambles at the end this is also why this video is going to be late because i decided to ramble at the end of the video but i'm doing it for you you know i i've told you guys before but this is for you the person who likes to stay at the end and is probably doing their art and having a way more zen day than i am <laughs> all right see you guys next week well, i guess see you guys on friday wait Tonight's Friday. See you guys at Twitch. Um, we're gonna finally do a Twitch stream again. We're gonna do the the uh, mis Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. We're gonna continue doing that. I'm gonna frustrate a lot of people. They're not gonna be able to keep their Zen because I play it in a really frustrating way, apparently. Um, yeah. So we're gonna do that on Twitch tonight. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go work on this Kickstarter thing, and hopefully it turns out well. Believe in me. I believe in me. I also believe in you. All right, this is the official goodbye.